All right, my friends, we're going to take a look at this situation that students sometimes investigate when they're learning about circular motion. We're going to look at the forces involved and see how observations of the system can help you, say, calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Well, so in this situation, you have this pig that cruises around in this circular path. And what we're going to do is, well, start out by looking at the forces that act on the pig. So you'd have gravity acting straight downward, and you'd have tension pulling along the string. Now, since the pig goes in a circular path, the acceleration of the pig is directly toward the center of the circle. And so what we're going to do is orient our axes for considering the motion of the system um, such that one of them points right along the center. The advantage of that is you get to say that all of the acceleration is then along the, say, x-axis, and none of it along the y-axis. Now, in principle, somebody can orient their axes however they want to, but this is just the most mathematically convenient way to do it. Well, so since our axes are vertical and horizontal, we're going to have to take some components of this tension force. Um, because we just want to consider components that are, say, along our axes when we go to apply Newton's law. So we'll have a vertical component of tension, and we'll have a horizontal component of tension that is actually what is causing the circular motion. Um, alternate interior angles are happening here. You'd have this vertical part of tension while being parallel to this vertical line that I dotted line that I've got here. So from geometry, these are alternate interior angles, and they're congruent. The component of tension that is vertical here is T cos theta. So tension is would be sort of like this hypotenuse, and what you're doing is if you project the tension down onto the adjacent side of, say, this triangle here, that's going to be T times the cosine of theta. And likewise, your um, horizontal component is going to be T sine theta. That would be like projecting the tension onto the opposite side of the known angle, and so that's why it's T sine theta. Well, so now let's apply Newton's law in the Newton's second law in the x and y directions. Well, so if you look in the x direction, there's only actually one force, T sine theta. And that is causing an, an acceleration um, the acceleration due to turning, and so that acceleration is the famous centripetal acceleration, that's v squared over r, where r is the radius of your orbit. And so if you do a little bit more trigonometry, what you can find is, well, here's your length of your pendulum here, and the, um, the horizontal component, or the distance of the circular orbit, would be l times sine of theta. And the reason that would be is, this place where I'm wiggling this arrow here, this angle would also be theta. And if you want to project L onto the side of a right triangle that's opposite the known angle, that's going to be L sine theta. So this is what we learned from looking at the horizontal motion. From the uh, vertical direction, well, the force is just balance. Um, so in the vertical direction, you would have, well, your sum of your y direction forces, you'd have T cosine theta going up, mg down, and those conspire to make no acceleration. Um, so t cos theta minus mg equals zero, which basically just means that they're equal. Um, t cos theta equals mg. Well, if you solve for the tension, um, you'd kick mg over to the other side and then divide by cos theta. And so here is a relationship for the tension in the chord. So we sort of have uh, a, a couple of equations for a couple of unknowns here. Um, so you have this green equation that's coming from horizontal information and this green equation that's coming from vertical information. And so let's use them together to eliminate this unknown tension. So there is your equation that came from the uh, horizontal information. There again is your equation that came from the vertical information. And what we're going to do is substitute this expression for t from the second equation here into the equation above. And when you do that, um, you get this relationship here. Notice there's a mass on both sides, so that's actually going to cancel right out. Um, and what we're going to do right now is pick on the velocity here. Now, if you want to find the velocity of this pig, 
that's going to be, well, distance over the time. Well, the distance that it travels is one circumference. And the time that it takes for one orbit would be some special time called t. So velocity, again, distance over time. Your distance is going to be 2 pi uh, times the radius of the circle, which is L sine theta, and then divided by the time for one orbit. Well, so let's just plug that expression for velocity in for v here um, in the green equation above. When you do that, you get, well, first of all, the mass is canceled, just to remind you of that, no more mass. Um, you have g sine theta divided by cosine theta still on the left. Um, again, mass is gone. Now let's square v. You're going to get 2 squared, which is 4, pi squared here. Um, you would get L sine theta squared, but you would divide one of those away because you have it here in green. It would be in the denominator, so that would kill off one of the L sine thetas. And so you're just left with uh, one factor of L sine theta in the numerator and then divided by the time squared, again, since we're squaring the velocity. What you notice is there's a factor of sine theta in the numerator on both sides of these this expression, so that's just going to cancel. Uh, and then you could kick the cosine theta over to the other side. So this relationship here would tell you the acceleration due to gravity in terms of the length of your pendulum, uh, the angle that you observe it to be kicked out at, um, and the time that it takes to go around one time. Um, so if you're doing an experiment here and you have the pig kind of flying around at a, at a constant speed, you could time like, you know, 10 laps and then divide by 10. And then that would be the time for one lap. And that's probably the number you might use here for your, for your time for one orbit. And so in principle, you should be able to use this to determine the acceleration due to gravity from observing this flying pig.